Bowen. What's your role in the web series? I am the executive producer and the director of this whatever the title is going to be. <laughs> Um, my name is Austin Albright. I am a stage and screen arts major with a double major in marketing communications. What I'm hoping to gain from this experience is how to work as a team with, that has multiple branches of leadership. Me as the head of that, it's all about time management and coordinating. I think I'm really good at making sure everybody in the group feels like a whole, everyone has a part and they're contributing in some kind of way. I'm really eager to start production, get out in the field, and start, uh, start the storytelling. Stay tuned, and I hope you enjoy the show. I'm Eric Johnson, Associate Professor in the Music and Stage and Screen Arts Department, and I am the instructor of record for the web series class, which has been a long-standing tradition that I was uh, privileged to uh, help create in its early inception that was actually a collaboration between three classes, my production class, a script writing class, and an acting class. And we thought, why not bring them all together? And that's what it is. I did web series last year, and I was the director of that project, and we had a smaller class. Honestly, it was nearing like half the size of our class right now. Honestly, initially, rom-com was not my idea. It wasn't something I was going to go for. But not that I was opposed to it. I'm just, I, I, I fall into writing horror a lot. Being that I've taken this class before, and I'm taking it again. One, I came back, so like clearly I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, no, last year it was a really fun experience. I'd seen a couple ones prior, and I liked it, and it sounded like everyone had a blast, so, and it felt like the mo most free-flowing of other SASA classes. I've gotten the most out of this department, I think, in web series, and that's because this is like, web series kind of feels like this is what everything like leads up to. Like this is the big, like, resume building class that you make the big thing you, and you're like this is it this is what I want uh, we just got done with the first location scout uh, I'm not really a location expert but we did learn quite a bit we found some ducks that was awesome, it definitely helped us stay focused. Then we uh, started actually doing our jobs after 45 minutes of photo shoots with the ducks. Wes, he taught us like a lot about shots and what we're looking for, especially being on the lighting team, like what we want for each shot and just what we're gonna, the ideal scenarios for each, each shot. We worked on some like dolly shots, just kind of went over where characters would be sitting, just felt out the vibe of the room. And yeah, that's kind of what we look for for all these locations is going in and trying to like paint the scene in our brain as best as we can to see if it fits or not. So, yeah. The, the mercantile was really cool. It was pretty, it was pretty neat. It was all like retro and stuff. And then we went in the back and there was just like Nazi memorabilia. <laughs> I was a little caught off guard, but I, I'd be lying if I said I, I didn't learn something. Yeah, go to the Mercantile for candy, ice cream, retro themes, Nazi memorabilia, and goats. Also, ducks. Hi, my name is Kat. I'm one of the four directors for Where the Arrow Lands. And our story follows the protagonist, Ellie, who runs away from home after getting really anxious and worked up about what her parents might think of her relationship. Her antics about being kidnapped follows the story of five other characters and the crazy stuff they get into. It's been a super fun time with everyone. The cast and crew of our class have been wonderful, just constantly getting better with every week and I couldn't have asked for a better group of people. 
How do you think casting went? Uh, casting went pretty good. I would say we definitely had some struggles of finding with scheduling pretty much because everyone has like lives and also Alice Wonderland is happening. I mean, I was told that, am I not needed here? No, no, <laughs> I mean, yes. We had to figure out the emotions for the characters because our characters for this web series are very different. Yes. favorite part of auditions? It was really fun to see some um, actors that we're very familiar with in SASA program to just see them like go above and beyond with their characters with like that are in our story. Well, could they do it somewhere else? It shouldn't be this hard to get away from a wreck in this unsalted cracker of a town. Eye contact. What? I've made eye contact. They're running <laughs> fast. Hey, what the hell? What we did for the actors that we believed were perfect. Well, uh, we had them kind of like connect with each other to see how the connection is between the two characters. So this is a rom-com, so we want to see if the connection is pretty good for that. So yeah. I would say the actors and actresses at Audition, they did a really good job. Um, I'm just very excited to see them on screen and see how they do when we start filming. So yeah. You want to track me wherever I go? Yeah, I did. It's for your Hello, I am Mary Rother, and I'm playing Ellie in Where the Arrow Lands. And we just had our first table read for episode one, and it was very exciting. Is this not enough? But I knew that it was kind of um, the premise of the show, and on. Honestly, this class itself is kind of organized chaos, a lot of like moving parts, and you could say the same thing about this because it's a rom-com. Uh, I can see a lot of myself in my character because Ellie is a very nervous and a little bit of a neurotic person. She has a lot to worry about, um, and I can understand her, but I think she's very... I like her, she's very expressive. And I have a lot of um, good people who I'm playing opposite of, Jackson Lindbergh, who plays Oliver, is playing my best friend, and they have a good dynamic, you know, fun to riff off of. And then um, there's um, the reporters, who are played by Meredith Bowermaster and Dominic Schaefer. Um, they're people that I would definitely, they're both really good actors, and I can't wait to do more with them. Filming is starting soon, and I'm very excited about that. I don't know, all this is kind of going in, I've never really done, um, basically prof like almost professional filming like this, but definitely in like really good hands with, because I certainly don't know what I'm doing and going from stage acting to screen acting, maybe it helps that my character's just a little bit cuckoo, but whatever. It's been really fun so far. You know, we're kind of, we're taking off like a rocket, certainly. And I am very excited for more filming to ramp up and to get deeper into the episodes and to have more time with uh, uh, Corinna, who plays uh, June, who is my character's girlfriend. And she is, she is a standout actress. And I really, really like her. I feel very comfortable with her. And she's a wonderful person. And so I am very excited for you guys to see this series that we are all working day and night, very hard on, and we are very excited for everyone to see it, and we hope you will enjoy it too. Oh yeah, at the very end, um... But Dad tries to stop yeah. that. Dad is like written to be on the stairs. Yeah, and she like okay. goes so past him. So yeah. he could be working, yeah. Dad could be working here, Mom, Mom could be like knitting. Yeah, production's going so far? I think it's going all right. <laughs> a little <laughs> iffy, a little uh, silly. A little bit? A little silly? Yeah. Okay. But otherwise good? Yeah, otherwise fine. Okay, good. Thank you. I have a panic attack every time I go to class. How do you think production's going so far? 
Uh, I think it's going pretty good. We, we technically haven't started yet. Uh, today is a bit of a dud day, as I would say. I mean, we have that snowstorm coming in, so. With the weather. Yeah. How do you think production's going so far? Oh, I think it's going swimmingly, That's... if you just ignore the oncoming winter storm. Yeah. Winter is coming. It's a kind of, it's already here, man. Hey everyone, uh, with the weather decision made by the university, we will have to roll with the punches. Uh, it will set us back a week pretty much for filming. I will work on the schedule and make it so we can accommodate for this. So stay tuned for that, um, actors as well. We are obviously still meeting tomorrow, so let's talk about this more. And uh, uh, please be timely tomorrow and be there, please. Uh, also, Wes, uh, please contact the Mercantile and tell them we won't be there on Thursday for filming. Everybody else, keep grinding your tasks. Thank you. My name is Wesley Pop. My major is stage and screen arts and marketing communications. All right, hey everybody. So this is everybody who's coming today. Um, just we're gonna start off with the montage stuff, obviously. Um, Taylor and Wes are your guys' heads, so just listen to them and like please try not to talk over each other. And I got into the film industry as like a production assistant and I've worked my way up since as a DP. We got some new equipment, the Aperture B7C bulbs. Um, a huge thing in this series is the like practical lamps that are used on set and we're going to use that as kind of our motivation for any interior shots. Um, I think what influenced me to get into this class was after taking it last year um, we had a lot of fun with it and I think it just teaches you a lot um, with how to manage your time and kind of just all the variables you don't really think about when you're creating something like this and just how many, how many different um, departments you can have at this scale, which is still small you know, comparison to like a Hollywood film. Um, as far as equipment goes for this production, uh, we will be shooting the majority of it on the Sony FX3. Um, it is a full frame 4K camera. Uh, for lenses, we're going to mainly be using the DZO Pictor Zoom. Uh, the 20 to 55 is the one that we have access to. For primes, we'll be using Rokinon Cine Primes. And as far as lighting goes, a good chunk of our lighting is going to come down to our key light, which is the Nanlite Forza 500, um, as well as our fill light, which is the Aperture 300D. After doing this last year, we had a pretty small class of I think I want to say 15 people and then a bunch of people outside of class but this year in particular I'm extremely excited for just the amount of people we have so I'm super pumped to see what we can do. I think the tricky thing with this class is we only have about four hours a week if that at least as far as class time goes so a lot of our time throughout this production I'm anticipating will be outside of class. Switch. Yep. Believe it or not, the light switch is a light switch. Um, <laughs> really? <laughs> Good heavens. Okay, so you just want me to like talk about the filming that we did yesterday? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> For yeah. sure. Um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, we just shot a couple scenes, um, so it was just me and Mary. Um, but that was our first time working together too, but it was really good and we just had so much fun with it. I know that they just have a ton of bloopers of us like completely messing around and just adding on to the script and being ridiculous together and it was, yeah, it was really fun. This was one of my first times working with film stuff, so I don't know a lot about it, but it was like they were speaking another language most of the time. So I would just like stand there very quietly, waiting to see if they needed me to go somewhere um, and just trying to process what everyone was saying. Cause it's just like an entirely different world. 
Yeah, everyone was so motivated. Like, it just, it really felt like working with professionals. I was like really proud of everybody, just, um, and really impressed by everyone's like talent and knowledge. Why are you thinking? What I'm saying here is that women are very important in our society. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, Thank you. How are they important? Yeah, how are they important? They're so important because they do so many things. Yeah, but like, like things. <laughs> Come on, so cater to specific God. <laughs> what is it? What, what do they do? <laughs> Sorry I hit you in the face of the eye. It, it was good, it was funny. <laughs> it was funny, but I was worried I was going to hit you in the eye. <laughs> you, you almost did all of it. I know, I so bad. Safe on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. Most shop, most mostly stocking shelf shit. <laughs> new new page. Stocking yeah, shelf shit. Huh? Okay. Him and Cat were rolling and do something for the camera. Oh, oh, oh! He feel it. Oh, he grew me as hell. Oh. Insert Logan. Logan? 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 Oh my God! <laughs> you get closer. Oh, oh. Hey, yo! Yes. <laughs> Unclear, but Tim. We're rolling. Okay. Right now, Tim, Tim, Tim. <laughs> okay, I will stand in as you. Yep. We can we just get a wait, lean forward. Take a step forward. <laughs> Hi. I'm Tim. <laughs> I'm waiting for one of them to hit each other. No, we're coordinated. And now the writers have to merge the episodes together. How are you feeling? Uh, well, uh, my main role was to be a writer for episode three anyway, so a lot of what I was doing was untouched, because thankfully episode four hadn't been super far along in production, but it was still very stressful because it meant that there would be a lot more hands playing a much larger role on the same script. We've been having some length issues. Uh, and we are on a very tight but very fluctuating schedule, which is making for all sorts of complications not super fun. I will say it is also, in some cases, a load off because it means that I don't have to write a full episode, but I do have to uh, make sure that everything flows well and doesn't pad the runtime too much, which means uh, we're cutting back on a lot of things that I was kind of clinging to. I have to kill my baby for this. It's hurtful. All right, so <laughs> um, we just got back from spring break and we are now in full like dive mode for um, getting things done marketing wise. Um, so we have like a whole crew now set up for marketing. We're working on the website, merch and posters um, and a lot of things are getting done and I'm very, very proud of our little team that we have. Um, we are being very productive and um, we also have an Instagram that we've been posting on like pretty much every single day. We're working on the cast and crew spotlights right now, um, which is very fun to like show each member and like a little bit about their lives and learn a little bit more about everyone on the team. So I find that really fun. Um, and yeah, uh, a lot of behind the scenes work is going on with marketing and it's so much fun just to get a taste of like what goes on on set and everything. Um, just to share with everyone as well. Where we currently are on web series, I'm very proud of how far we have come. Um, even if we're on like a little bit of a time crunch, um, we are very professional when it comes to like getting things done and scheduling. And I have to give major props to like Austin and Wes and Tim and like everyone on the exec board um, for kind of like being the leaders of everything to like get everything done. So. Um, very much props to them. Um, I feel like we couldn't really do anything without them, so.
for when we get that footage yeah. and we're putting all that together. Absolutely. Uh, would you be able to do that? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks Absolutely. so much. Hi, I'm Adrian, and I am the makeup artist for Where the Arrow Lands, and right now I am doing the makeup for Mark. We're in the aging process because I want to give that like middle-aged dad look, and since my actor here is not obviously in his 40s, he doesn't have the wrinkles or the features, so the makeup helps bring out the features, adding contour to the wrinkles he already has, and then tracing that, and then adding highlight so the wrinkles can be more pronounced. So I'm basically just building off of what he naturally has when he like scrunches up his face. And so the two main characters that had like biggest makeup looks, the other one was Charlie. And so what I wanted to do for Charlie was do a more edgy kind of alt look, kind of gives it that edgy, could it match the character's personality. How's this process been for you, Logan? <laughs> oh, this process has been great, I think. Very, gl very glad to like have Adrian being the one to, to like accelerate my aging per se. <laughs> but uh, I very clearly remember the reference you used for me, and that mm -hmm. was a picture of Brian Cranston. <laughs> she wanted to put a thing on the side yeah. right now of Brian Cranston. And it came across the way I wanted it to. So my role uh, in the web series is playing Ellie's father, Mark. It's honestly been really fun to like get into like the character of Mark being this like middle-aged strict father no matter even for me no matter the size of the role it's it's just really enjoyable to work with this these talented people oh yeah that's right I'm also the lead editor and that's been really fun uh, we're still shooting for episode two and three a process that has been long but it's also I guess in my case it's honestly pretty fun and we're working very hard at this. My, my assistant editors have been putting a lot of time and effort into this project. I've been treating these episodes almost like they're my own child. It's gonna be a lot of work, there's going to be a lot of stress, there's gonna be a lot of butting heads, I think. But I think at the end of the day, this is going to, I think this project is really gonna flourish with what we have. I'm hoping that we'll hit the, hit the comedy right uh, the heartfelt moments, right, and especially the romance portions, right. It's a lot of work, but I think a lot of the crew that we have that we have in this class is really putting their their all into this, and I could not have asked for a better group to work with. Anyways, I'm a father. <laughs> uh, I'd say it actually went, uh, it went pretty well. Um, <laughs> Oliver gets dunked on a lot. It caught me off guard. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm excited to film uh, these scenes coming up. Uh, Oliver's in this episode a lot, so that'll be a lot of fun. Episode two, definitely, uh, we were all talking right after, and we were talking about how this episode seems a lot more comedic than the last one. Um, definitely more on the comedic side, not saying that episode one wasn't comedic, it was a little bit, but this one goes into that heavily. Is Oliver the butt of the joke most of the time? Yes, but it's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Ignition anyway, I mean, what sort of backwards ass- HANK! I'm going! <laughs> Hank finally points up staring straight ahead as he steps on the gas. I'm going. Yeah, I definitely say that, me personally, I've been nervous for uh, what's coming up with, um, like, episode two, and then episode three, because we cut episode four now, at a bit of a time crunch, but make sure that we stay on schedule and that we're able to make the best product possible. I have faith in everybody. I'm very excited to see where the arrow lands no. in the end. <laughs> Come on, it fits, it fits. While, while we're shooting for, mm -hmm. for the second and third and the final episode, we're, um, 
working on yeah on the sound bites mm -hmm. and the sound right for we're coming yeah. to the end of our process on recording audio but then we're starting our process for post-production audio at the same time and it's a bit of a cluster yeah. <laughs> but, but we're getting yeah there. we're getting there so yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be perfect amazing it's been uh, fun it's, the whole time yeah. it's been a lot of fun I love mm -hmm. to see how everything, since we're also on the writing team, how everything comes together right now. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just like this final steps that we have to do. Mm -hmm. uh, also the mixing part, how um, everything blends in together and if it actually works. And mm -hmm. so far we're quite pleased to see what mm -hmm. we came up with. And I'm proud of everyone who's involved. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it's it's. It's a great project and we're proud of it so far. We are in the final stages of the production, which has been very eventful and always is. And this time of year, the stress level is through the roof. And that's something that as an instructor, I get it. It's like, this is not the only thing that's going on. Students are juggling other classes, they're doing other activities, but the end is in sight. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done in a little amount of time. So really the margin of error is, is lessened, but at the end of the day, this is a class. And I think to me, the biggest takeaway to this whole experience is just that, the experience. It's seeing students, what they can do under pressure, what they can do with working with others. And aside from just the technical, you've got the creative and then you've got the personalities. And oftentimes those are things that you cannot teach in the context of a classroom. So that hands-on experiential peer mentoring and learning is by design and it's extremely gratifying to me to see all those things come together at the end and have it shared with an audience and it isn't easy getting to this point as all the students know but i guarantee at the end of the day when they look back at this experience they will never forget it and that to me it all makes it worth it in the end we just wrapped up a crazy hectic week and weekend. We pulled 11 to about 9 on Saturday, 11 to 7 on Sunday. It was a crazy week. We did a lot of stuff. Um, we're in our final week of filming. We're just setting up for our third to last shoot right now. And I'm super proud of the way everyone came together. They focused. We still had fun. Um, just the way that we all collaborated. Truly couldn't have been blessed with a better group of people to work with. It was really fun. Something I've learned from this class is that there's actually a lot that goes on behind the scenes. I'm not a SASA major, so seeing the actual, I'm looking at this all right now, seeing the actual production take place is quite crazy because in the shot there's only supposed to be four people and right now there's just under 20, so. <laughs> the thing I learned from this class uh, was that I wasn't expecting to have long days, but if you do take the class, you're going to have long days. There's no, there's no fighting it. So uh, something I've learned here with this wonderful class probably be, people like this, I like the script I worked on. That was pretty cool. That was nice. Cause I haven't really written a whole lot. And it's, it's nice to kind of watch it happen. It's definitely not something I've done before. Um, I think another thing that I thought was interesting is how we have three people named Jackson. And it has been an ongoing struggle to identify who is, whose responsibility is what uh, since the class started. Um, one person will say, hey Jackson, do this. And like all three of them will turn their heads. It's really silly, really goofy. Yeah, the last couple of weeks were pretty stressful, um, but very enjoyable. I really liked working with that fantastic team and learning about just how to organize shoots, just just doing it and having that experience. And um, I, yeah, I, I'm really grateful that I had the chance to do this project. And I think I'm very proud of what we did as soon as I see it. 
Um, so the last few weeks have been very stressful, but also very fun. I got to do some directing, which was not part of the plan, but was very fun to experience. And I'm very excited to see the finished result. Working on the documentary for this project has been an experience like no other and getting to work more closely with everyone in this class has been an absolute privilege. I really feel like the Sasa department is such a family and it's just been amazing seeing this all come together and I'm so incredibly proud of everyone. You can't even imagine the amount of hours and work that truly went into making this project, especially this semester, and I'm so excited for everyone to see it. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, then, uh, yeah, yeah. What, someone give them a high five. Yeah. Did someone give them a high five? Tim! Okay. Eye contact. I've made eye contact. They're running fast. Hey, what the hell? Were they spying on us? Not a chance. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh my god. Really? Was that the? How'd that feel? Focus a lot. Like one more. Last shot. Last shot. Let's do another one. Let's do it. Why are you gobbling? Yay, my gas! Yeah. <laughs> Ready when you are. Episode two, roll three, scene five, take one. This right here? <laughs> All right. Best tripod. Yeah. Can we have a banana peel for yeah, <laughs> Okay, Laura. Okay.
sing it, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Just close the doors. Austin, get out of the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you're, what? It's still saying Ellie, Ellie, Ellie. Yep, Ellie, Ellie. Okay, okay you're looking. Oh, yeah. Look to watch my hand. I suck. It's still recording. That's a wrap. Uh, enjoy oh. the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has been the best project ever. I'm really proud of everyone here. So we did good, especially since we're all freezing. I don't know. <laughs> my, uh, my baking powder, like volcano in fifth grade, went hard. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Dude, go home. <laughs> all right, love you guys. Bye. 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 Woo! We can run away to another place Somewhere we can be alone Take me home and get you elevated Till we're levitating And you know That I've been dreaming about you, girl No, it ain't a mystery So take me home I want you to take me home Take me home this class I learned stuff about cameras and I found out that I like frosted animal crackers more than I originally thought I did I think that's what I learned from this class yeah